Hello and welcome to another instalment of Basket Case. Uh, I've gone and purchased a pair of nitrogen charged shock absorbers um, in the hope that it'll improve the handling of the excess. Uh, now the nitrogen charge works in that uh, the shock absorber is filled with oil and there's a series of valves so to control the flow of oil in and out of the shock absorber as it compresses and rebounds. There's also a piston inside this chamber uh, that has the oil on one side and a charge of nitrogen on the other side. The object being that it maintains pressure on the oil um, volume and it will float up and down as the oil travels in and out of the shock absorber and it helps to maintain pressure on the oil so that it doesn't start to cavitate and aerate and carry on. This shock also has a nice progressive rate spring. Now, a progressive spring, for those that uh, are unfamiliar, is one that um, starts soft and then gets firmer as it compresses. And they achieve this by winding the coils tighter uh, and then spreading them out as it goes down the, down the length of the shock. That spring uh, because of the, the way the coil is laid over will be less resistant to compression uh, at, at the top end and then as you stand the spring up it becomes more difficult to compress so you end up with uh, a nice progressive rate uh, on your travel. As opposed to a linear spring which was, has got um, the coils all spread evenly throughout the length of the, of the spring. Now that's great. Uh, now I can't afford Olin's or Coney's so I've gone for um, a, a lower cost alternative which I purchased on eBay uh, they seem pretty pretty good the only issue that I've got now of course is that look where I put the bracket for the indicators right so this is why you need to make sure that you sort all these little details out prior to committing to paint so I now need to snip that off there on both sides and relocate it up here somewhere so that it's clear of the shock absorber uh, and the other thing I have to do on the bodywork is over here I've got a, uh, a flat spot that I'm not very happy with. Uh, I machined up some tubes to fit inside the frame and the, and the hoop uh, to help reinforce it and give me something to weld to, uh, to assemble this rear end. Uh, I didn't have the frame with me when I machined it so uh, I machined this side just a little bit too tight, a little snug and I was tapping it in with a soft hammer and got it uh, a little bit overzealous when I was trying to persuade at home and I've whacked a flat spot in there so I need to mix up some body filler get all of that paint off so the body filler's got something to grab and uh, we'll tidy that bit up there as well so a couple of more things to do to the frame uh, before we can send it off to paint and uh, I also haven't figured out what I'm going to do to mount this seat um, yet so I need to work on that because of course it's uh, just sitting on there at the moment. Alright, so it's time for me to start grinding and slapping a bit of bog around. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, so that's better. I cut the brackets off the frame and relocated them. So there's plenty of clearance there now. Now the brackets on the other side. I've removed the paint from the offending indentation and uh, I just need to make up, mix up some body filler now and get that squared away put a little bit more etch primer on on there and uh, we'll be good to go to the painter okay exciting times okay stay tuned <laughs> 